Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to this game, Mount Herman Charity Tournament for Save the Children. It is a charity tournament after all. Uh, my name is Morality Claus, and I will be your caster for this game. Priest Gaming versus Enzo. Both Russian teams in this lower bracket final of this Charitas tournament. Please do donate. We haven't had enough donations. We pre we really really want donate donators. We really the children really need donators. Think of the children. Please, people, please. This is, after all, all going to charity. All going towards a good cause. But for now Let us have a look into let us have a look at what Prees and Enzo are picking here. Okay, so the first bands uh Invoker, Gyrocopter. Invoker being very prevalent being almost to the point of overpowered, people are saying, in this new meta that we have here, 6.86 to change a lot of things up. Now, the problem with Invoker is that now more than ever, with his Invoke buff, he has Cold Snap level 1, which is very, very devastating. It's not something you want to deal with, uh, especially with Cold Snap, and I believe it was... Reserved. Uh, well, yeah, no, Cold Snap and another ability level, which you grab at level 2. Very devastating combo, very uh, annoying to play against. So, already a first pick ban by Priest. Um, and Enzo banning out the Tusk and the Bane. Both very good day support, so accordingly, already banning out very strong heroes. I mean, it's obvious, really, it's what you do. Gyrocopter being banned out as well, one of the stronger carries in the meta, has remained the stronger carries, uh, one of the stronger carries. Taken from last meta. Is still one of the stronger carries today. Doom has remained pretty good. Especially with his ability change now. Infernal Blade in case you haven't known. Igniting an enemy. It, stunned. it applies a stun so it's good for stopping TPs. And applies a 4 second burn that deals. A not. It's very, very potent actually if you look at it. Max HP it's damage. 5% of your max HP is damage. That is very, very uh, hefty. Luckily, it's magical, so it does get blocked by uh, resistances. So there's something. At least you've got that going for you. And they do pick up a Lina, so they're going for a bit more uh, power-heavy, I guess. Lina is known to blow up single-target heroes. Doom, of course, the single-target hero uh, destroyer of the game. Uh, Priest, meanwhile, have decided to go the safe route and have picked up two supports. Shadow Shaman and Eventual Spirit. Ventral Spirit fell off a bit in the last meta. She's still a good support, but she wasn't the best. Now, Shadow Shaman really hasn't been seeing much action. I mean, it's a bit niche. He's a good lane support. The problem is he requires levels. Because he wants levels in all the spells. And he's a good pusher. Uh, Ventral Spirit's good at nuking, good at uh, lowering the armor. But the problem is that a stun... A stun's really good as well. I mean, it's, it's a solid nuke plus stun, so it's pretty good. Swap is okay. Level one, it's weak. Level three, it's great. There's not really much of a combo with these two, so they're probably planning to pick up something else later along the line that works together with the Chen as well uh, being banned out. I'm guessing Enzo do not want to play against the Chen. This is more of a comfort ban as Chen is not really a top tier ban at the moment. I believe he has been rising, but it's not really something you ban out first phase. Kind of interesting there. And so we wait for the next bans. Lone Druid being banned out as well. That's interesting. So no Rat Dota for you, Breeze, unless you pick up the Nature's Prophet. And I'm not guessing Enzo is going to ban out the Nature's Prophet. Although, Damn. considering Chen, Lone Druid both banned out, they probably want to ban out the Nature's Prophet next. But it's just a thought. Maybe they're thinking Rat Dota is the way that Priest is going here. And it might be because Shadow Shaman is a very, very potent pusher. If he has the backup, so this might be me picking up something to push with the Shadow Shaman. I don't think a Nature's Prophet actually makes too much sense here. But the Slada, they decide to pick up a Slada. Solid core offlane support, then any way you want to put it. Really should be played more as an offlane as he does need a blink dagger to start the initiations. So they already have a solid offlane here with the uh, Slada. Slivering Crush, another solid stun onto the pile. Shadow Shaman, of course, has Hex and Shackles. Both aren't really stuns, but they're disables, which always works. Especially versus Doom, Lina, and Abaddon. 
Now, Abaddon is interesting because Abaddon really just doesn't see much playing competitive. He doesn't fit into a carry role and he doesn't really... Radiance and the only role he really fits in is a support role. I mean, carry Abaddon has been seen by Loda, of course, and the problem with carry Abaddon is it's very... Shall I say disappointing in comparison to other carries? So I'm not sure about this pickup. Might be a carry Abaddon, might be some way to counteract Priest's I nuke potential, but the thing is if they hex up the Abaddon... Uh, that could be bad. Ten seconds. They don't have a 400 damage nuke, so there's... Oh, well, they did pick up the Zeus. Uh, I don't think any of his nukes are 400 damage, though, so there's no way to get through a Bannon's borrowed time instantly. Enzo picking up a wind range as well. So, okay, they have a DP... They have some form of DPS in the um, in terms of the wind ranger. Problem with the wind ranger is, in order to get a DPS online, she does need a bit of farm. And she does need to be backed up because she remains relatively weak throughout the game. Until she's able to pick up a few more tank items. Now, I'm not seeing the lanes on Enzo here. They could send the Lina mid, put the Doom in the jungle or on the offlane for the Abaddon and Windranger. Well, that means it leaves the Windranger in a very awkward position of having to play support. Which the Windranger can definitely do with the new, sh with the new branch uh, buff, I'd like to say. But the problem is, is that Windranger's support will insta-melt to the Zeus. Like, that's... A given. That's a given. So, really, what what matters here is what Enzo can do to negate Priest's laning, Priest's uh, early game. Because if Priest gets a good early game and they are able to transition well into the mid game, they have a very good strong lead. The Zeus especially, if he's able to get one or two kills, uh, three kills would be great, and not die on what's probably going to be the mid lane, then they're going to have a very good start, like an amazing start, especially with this Juggernaut now as well. If they can keep the Juggernaut not occupied, as in they can give space to the Juggernaut, then it will be great, as I've noticed I have a few settings on I probably want to turn off. Never mind. As we now wait for Enzo to last pick. Well, well, for Enzo's last pick. What are they missing? I don't think they're missing carry. What I think they are missing is a support. I don't think Abaddon's support works too well, if you ask me. It's good for sustain, but the problem is he's very greedy as a support. But instead they pick up a carry. Enzo have picked up something very greedy here. They've gone for a win. I mean, you could probably repay the Lina as a support, but... Uh, it's going to be very weird, very weird indeed. I'm going to enjoy looking to how to, uh, how they make this work. Priest is very straightforward in this case, though. I mean, there's nothing really non-standard about there. And uh, maybe the Shadow Shaman, but you know, it's fine. Really, what you have to look forward to here is how the early game goes and how it, the transition into the mid and the late game go, because Enzo have. An incredible late game. Like, their late game is unrivaled. Priest will not be able to do much versus their late game. Uh, simply because the PL will wipe out everything abandoned in the late game. If he's able to get some items up, will be horrible. Wind range in the late game, if she's able to get some items up, will be horrible. Uh, I should probably start a poll as well in case we want to see game two, because there definitely will be a game two in Desert Camo. But for now, there's a standard pause going on. As apparently Miposhka on the PL has DC from the game. So yeah, once, like I was saying, uh, let's just analyze the Zeus Arcana quickly. It has Priest do smoke up for the first second of the game, really. First few seconds of the game. Now, where is the Zeus with his spiffing new model? His powerful electric new Arcana. Uh, I'm just making up. I'm just selling out here, boys. Nah, nah, it's fine. Apparently, yeah, I can't read that, unfortunately. Probably something, something, something about something. Oh, let me mind, let me just remember to put on the right overlays as I have there. Okay, very good. This should work out well. Okay, as we return back into this game, Priest versus Enzo, 
On the Dire side, we have Giga playing the Shadow Shaman, Gedrox playing the Juggernaut, the Courier playing the Courier, uh, Justice playing the Zeus, and last but not least, Pwn playing the Slada, going towards the off lane. Eknot will be playing the Lina Smoked up to place a crucial ward here, will allow them to keep vision up over Gedrox, very well played by them. Uh, Miposhka on the PL, um, TMW on the Wind Ranger, Kart playing the Abaddon. And the courier playing the courier and of course we missed one flow playing what looks like to be an off lane doom okay that does make a bit more sense if you ask me it does allow doom to be a bit more yeah that allows him to gain a bit more levels which he does desperately need especially in this situation where you've got people who are going to be very greedy throughout the game uh, apparently we have more technical difficulties going on Abaddon will be going mid? I'm not sure about that. That doesn't... I, that, that can't be the case, can it? No, they're probably going to grab the bounty and send Alina mid, right? That would make more sense than what they're doing here, because versus Zeus... Well, Abaddon does stand a chance versus Zeus. The problem is, like, yeah, his farming will be very, very slow, because Zeus is a ranged hero versus Abaddon as um, well, yeah. As Abaddon, really. A hero which is able to tank up a lot, but uh, no, they wouldn't send him mid. And Juggernaut reconnects. So, what are we hoping for this game? Well, I'm hoping for a very entertaining game. The best would be a game to see. Like, they cannot go late for priests. Priests are on a timer here. Like, if they don't get an early game lead, or at least a mid game lead, they're going to be very, 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 um, they should be very scared. Because there's a team with a Doom in the late game, uh, with the PL in the late game, and we already talked about the PL and the uh, Wind Ranger. We didn't talk about the Doom. Doom in the late game can be devastating. The Refresher Doom is not something you want to neglect. Uh, no, they will actually send Wind Ranger mid that. Also makes sense, so didn't consider the option, especially with two Fairy Leaves. Now, to be honest about the Fairy Leaf, I'm not sure that the two damage is too so great. I mean, don't get me wrong, it probably isn't bad, but... Uh, it's negligible, shall we say. I think the, the main reason you get it is because it's an added bonus onto on top of uh, the health restore thing. 75 health restored for an item that costs, like, uh, 75... It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's instantly as well. It's actually one of the uh, few items that instantly gives you health, other than a mecha. It's very cheap at that as well, so great to have for sustainability, especially on the mid lane where you might be receiving a lot of bursts, so you want to get that 150 health healed up very quickly. Could be able to turn a fight. This mid lane should be very balanced, actually, because TMW can stay at range. Uh, from the Zeus. However, Zeus does have a lot of abilities that do hurt a lot at range, and he hasn't taken any damage yet, whereas TMW has to start watching out. Those two pool tangos will not last too long if he doesn't watch out. He does have a stick, though, which is an obvious choice versus the Zeus, who's going to be spamming out his spells constantly. And up here, it does look like Flo has actually received help from the band, so they are dual lading with a single... So the safe lane, yeah, versus the Slada, this does work slightly better. The problem is, look at this. Pwn is going to keep harassing out Miposhka. Miposhka really, really wants a solo lane here. With Pwn consistently harassing him out, that's going to be hard. However, the pull does come in. However, Miposhka going to take a lot of damage. Priest Pwn might actually uh, dive this, but no. With 20 health left, Miposhka does manage to get away from this. Here comes the Lina. Nice light striker right here. Will Miposhka actually come right back into this? Yeah. Phantom Lance is out. So Pwn has to get away. Does have pop sprint. So he's taking more damage. Good light striker ray on the second. But she's only level 2. Does not use the Dragon Salve. And Pwn will be able to salve up again. So barely missed attempt on both sides there. Miposhka not getting the... Uh, Miposhka not dying. But they not getting the return kill onto... Uh, pwn here on the top lane as well i mean i mean this works well i mean flow is tanky by nature he's a doom and with the apotic shield this makes him even more tanky miscore will make him even more tankier 
So basically a lot of sustainability on the top lane with the uh, Scorched Earth as well. So something I really neglected to mention. But the problem is, look at this. They're already moving in here on the defensive tri lane. Forcing both of them out back towards the tower. For some reason the sentry ward up. Searching for wards, I'm guessing, here. In case they perform the same strat as in there. Didn't want to get the off lane sighted out. What's interesting is that they prob the Dyer probably had a ward there because I don't see any wards for Dyer anywhere. Meanwhile, Mimposhka is having is just taking it again, taking a lot of damage. He's 19 and 5 up though, which is not bad. But the problem is there's like this magical marker you want to reach at 10 minutes. It's about uh, 80, I believe. 50 is substandard. Uh, 50 is what you want to get like in pubs. 80 is the one you want to get if you are absolutely perfect in last hitting. Because, come on, we're only human. We're going to miss a few. It's obvious. Now, uh, once again, Zenigata going in a cat here. Scorch stuff is used. Shackles are used. And this is a very dead cat. First flight goes towards Priest here. And this is the danger of this top lane. Oh, it's a double kill for the Shaman. In the early game, that's just two heroes that are considered very tanky. Not a good start at all for Enzo. Priest taking that with a very, with just three kills of three kills after all. This is a very high kill potential lane. I did not talk about this earlier. I should have maybe talked about this earlier. I mean, well, however, right now we have Pwn going all in on Eknart. Eknart, who will have to run away from this, but Pwn. He's just going to keep chasing him. Slivering Crush is up. Miposhka's there to help him out, though. Eknart will not be able to get away from this, or will he? Light Strike away is good, but Zeus kills secure. Now, Pwn able to get away and using Sprint. Miposhka will not chase. Radiance mid -tower's coming apart. 400 gold for Priest right here. Three kills in the span of like a minute. And Enzo... This top lane, I forgot to neg I neglected to mention the insane stun combos you have. This is lane control pure. You have shackles on the shaman. You have the stun to set up on the vengeful. And then you have Gedrox to finish it all off with the blade fury. Level 3 now, going very aggressive here. No stats taken, so he's going standard build here. Aquila. Standard blade fury build, I meant to say. Getting the Aquila as well. I, this is going to be problematic for Enzo. They really need to start farming up Miposhka like hard. And with 30 last hits in 5 minutes, that's not bad. That's not bad, especially with TMW doing the, the on the same level. Zeus behind, but remember that Zeus is very, very, very dependent on kills. He will farm up for the first few minutes, but he's not the greatest of farmers in his own right. So we should be able to see a lot more action coming up from him later but for now pwn once again very aggressive um pwn i'm surprised really how aggressive he is considering his uh, state of... he does use sprint very liberally only level one so the uh, additional damage taken is good and meanwhile once again the top lane they dive deep for that one, if he, if they're all here. They dove, like, there for that one. In fact, they're doing it again! Gedrox is... This is not good. Kill secure from the Zeus. Eknat will try and stop something from happening, but it won't happen. In fact, they might as well just go in on him again. Omni Slash is up, so it was used for the kill. Meanwhile, Wind Ranger getting a kill on Zeus mid, so at least it's something. TMW low, so probably a short engagement there. As we now wait and see top towers taking hits. what this top lane will achieve next. Oh no, Eknot. You are in such a bad situation. But no, the ninja spot. They couldn't see him. They couldn't see him. He's going to walk out again though. He's going to get spotted. Oh, that's not what you wanted to do. Spin is there. Eknot is very dead in this case. There's nothing he could have done here. Scorched off will be used though with the cloak aura. To minimize the magical damage done. But this is not going to work. The stun's up again. Juggernaut's there. Shaman will shackle. Where? What can Dedrox do though? There's no need to do anything. The lucky crits help. And uh, Ventral does take the last hit. Bit more fun for her. Meanwhile, Pwn versus Miposhka. Oh. Lord. Enzo. 
falling apart all over the place. This isn't happening for them, is it? Uh, as the smoke's up mid. Tactical kill on the Windranger who is looking pretty fat right now. Top farmer of the current match. 52 last hit to 9, but will that remain so? The net worth, does it say anything else? Unfortunately, the Windranger dies. And net worth does say something different, but the problem is, is that very early game, you can't trust this net worth statistic. It's uh, not the greatest of statistics, in any case. In the early game, in the late game, it becomes a lot more telling. But right now, uh, I'd rather look at last hit. Our juggernaut is catching up pretty quickly. And Pone once again on the bot lane. His job has been fulfilled, really. He has annoyed the living hell out of Miposhka and out of uh, Eknart. And while he has, he hasn't even died once. Is something to be considered. Not, hasn't gotten a kill, has only gotten an assist, but it's still something that you need to consider. This is important because he's a very happy uh, starter at this point, as another lightning strike, uh, another Thunderbolt, Thunder God's Wrath comes out. TMW low. Not dead yet, though. I'm priest and I'm looking for objectives or not. <laughs> They're saying no, we don't want objectives, we want kills. And we want them hard, but this could backfire on them as Giga is caught out. On this slash onto TMW. TMW will try and run off, but will not make it. Giga, meanwhile, still not dead. As there's the 2v3 situation, a potic shield is used. There goes Abaddon. There is no mana left on Eggnog. What can she do versus now Justice rotating in? Gedrox and Agatha and Justice all have enough mana to make stuff happen here, and they will make it happen. There's the crit. F triple kill for one on the side of Priest. Almost a quad kill. Too much damage for Flo. Flo having to stick back to the second tower as the first tower falls. 800 gold swing in the early game as we... Take a look at the net worth, which now tells a lot more. Shadowshan, meanwhile, killing off the Miposhka on the bottom lane. This is going all wrong for Enzo. Their greedy strat did not work out. Ooh, misplaced wards there. But the micro is good, and the stun stacking works. And the wards, even though misplaced, yeah. Actually, to be honest, I don't think those wards were too great. Uh, you probably want to use them for pushing instead, but... Uh, Never mind. A kill is a kill. A kill is a kill. As we look at the net worth. Well, um, I'm not sure if this is a record for something, but 7.5k net worth down for the first 10 minutes is embarrassing. That's not something you see every day. Let me just tell you that. I don't think you even see that in pubs. There is no way that this is normal. Eknot. <laughs> GG out. Not even t one tower down. That is it. And they give up? Wow. I think they I think I think they might have heard the net worth statistic here. I think they might have heard the net worth statistic here. <laughs> oh dear. Or people were just salty. I don't know. But anyway, Priest, they, they, they took that game very hard. They took that game incredibly hard. That was an 11 minute game, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Alright then, uh, we'll be back hopefully for game 2. <laughs> My name is Maraticlaws and let's hope game 2 isn't such much of a stomp as this one. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs>